Mr. Krishnamurthy has been serving as an independent organization development consultant for the past 30 years, taking up various roles like advisor, coach and mentor, trainer and visiting faculty to several business and non-business organizations. He is popularly called as Pitti in the film industry. He is a well-known Indian film artist, TV personality. Apart from being a mass media celebrity, he is a great motivational speaker. He is certified in coaching and mentoring with Coach University of US. Sir, please join us on stage. Very good morning. It's such a delight to be with this intelligent audience. You know, because the audience is so intelligent, you also get a little scared of saying, hey, you're going to be coming and taking 30 minutes precious time of 300 plus people that works up to roughly 150 precious man hours. You better say something worthwhile and valuable for these people. That's what the mind keeps saying. Okay, let me try. So guys, I'm very, very happy today to be part of uh, this August audience and share some of my perspectives. But the first question is, why am I here? And to that extent, I would say, I'm here because uh, I'm a Rasik of life. Rasik is in Rasika, Indian terminology. I'm a connoisseur of life. And my perspective in life is looking at what I call as the, the exposure pathway more than the expertise pathway. I have great respect for expertise, of course. Expertise is very important that you pick up a field, go very deeply into that and really dig deeper and deeper and achieve excellence of a particular kind. And that's how 80 90 percent of life works for significantly improving products and services. But I'm, you know, kind of uh, belonging to the other 20 percent. I'm a great believer in the exposure part of life. Can I look at multiple things of life? Can I look at multiple experiences of life in multiple domains? And can I understand the common theme running through that? So that's my trip of life. And in that, what I've discovered is this most fascinating thing, that to be a human being is both a mystery and a magic. I'm most fascinated with human beings, how their mind works. And therefore, I spend a fair amount of my time in working on the mind phenomena, self-awareness and the development of human beings. So that's why I'm here today. So what am I planning to do? Thank you so much for this opportunity to come and share some perspectives. So I'm going to be talking about multidimensional things. A combination of uh, experiences coming from corporate world, where I've been working for the last 40 years, out of which 30 years as an independent consultant with a whole diverse industries, business houses. I work with institutions quite a bit, educational institutions, starting from school level to colleges and universities. Plus, I'm also very lucky because I do multiple things in life. I also work in the creative world. I work in films. Predominantly as an actor, but I've also written, I've directed two films. I appear in television in terms of a uh, few things. Well, that's about the listing part of it. But what I want to really look at is, hey, if I look at the common thread in all these things, what is it that really ticks? And what is it that creates effectiveness? So I'm going to talk about harnessing people power, at least from the two dimensions. One is the dimension of business organization and organizational management. The other one, which is something that you may be very interested in, because I think Indians love films, the film industry. All right, project, the word is very interesting. Like many words in English, some of these words have multiple meanings. For example, you take the word object, O-B-J-E-C-T. It actually has got three meanings. Object, I object to what you're saying, which means I stop you from expressing what you want to, objecting, stopping. Objective, which is, I have an objective in my mind, which is like a goal, an aim. And the third one, object, is material, things, <laughs> something which is uh, not animate. Similarly, the word project, if you really look at it, it has got at least two strong meanings. One, you may say, in a lighter kind of a tone, project, project, the O becomes pro. The other one is project. And it is the same, isn't it? So sometimes it's nice to look at these intricacies of language and what they try to mean. So I looked at that very closely. So to project, which is a verb, would mean possibly visualize, 
imagine, aspire, or represent something? And typically, if you look at business organizations, there is this need for leadership to be a visionary leader, which means in this aspect of projecting the ability to see a distant future, a possible emerging reality out there, let's say after the next three years, five years, 10 years, is such an important quality. Visualizing, dreaming, aspiring, and inspiring a whole organization to move towards that. That's a great quality. But when it comes to the second one, which is project, and I guess all of us sitting here today are coming more from this project point of view, then actually becomes more of a noun. Then it talks about a completed or fulfilling defined version of a projection of the earlier one that we talked about or an intention with very clear parameters of end and what kind of end either of impact or of influence or of some implication. So I think it will be interesting for us to understand where does the second part really come in. Most of us understand the first part from a very generic point of view. You go to any Tom, Dick and Harry consultant and you tell them that, you know, we want to really grow as an organization. You don't have to wait for even two seconds. You'll come with this classic, cliche, regular, simple question. What's your vision? As if that's going to answer everything. But you may have vision. All of us have our individual visions. We want to be there somewhere in life. But life doesn't happen that way. You know why? It's just like taking, let's say, a journey to Bangalore. So you want to go to Bangalore. Do you need a vision? In terms of the first one, project, or do you need a, you know, do you need a execution in terms of the project? You may say, hey, of course you need a vision. Uh, so to begin with, I'll say Bangalore is on to the western side of Chennai. So you need to go really westwards. That's the vision. It's fantastic. But you get into a car and do you look at the west direction and keep driving, or do you look at the bumper of the car in front of you? That is project. The ability to have very clearly defined, measurable, short phases of completion in an excellent kind of way, which ultimately may accumulate into the journey, is all about project management efficacy. I said. And this has dawned on me more than anything else because of this involvement in this industry for almost 30 years now, the film industry. In fact, I think it has got heightened about last month, you know, we participated in this NIPM National Institute of Personal Management annual national conclave. I was there along with Arvind Swami and we shared the platform together on looking at, you know, the people that I mentioned in organization. And it stuck both of us that actually filmmaking is all about amazingly efficient project management. So I'm going to bring some of those insights into that. So if you're saying that this project management is all about having that sharpness and clarity of what needs to be done and completed very well in specific periods of time, it throws up a few points for us to consider. Number one, it's time-bound endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Sure. The second one, and that's most applicable to our industry, every film making is a team coming through for a temporary relationship, but possibly creating a product which lives beyond their lifetimes. Films stay on for 50 years, 60 years, 100 years. But the team that comes together, can you imagine, comes together for 6 months, 12 months, 18 months. It's an amazing concept of project management. They come together for such a short period of time and create possibly, potentially, eternal kind of products. So a project is, a temporary, is temporary in that way that it has got a defined beginning and a defined end in time. And therefore, there's a defined scope of resources and endpoints. And the third point related to that would be that it's therefore strongly driven by the three parameters of fulfillment, as I call it. Three parameters of fulfillment. Any need in life, any need under life, in life, is defined by three parameters. The first parameter is one of time. The second parameter is of space, and that includes material. And the third is the dimension of quality. Time, space, quality together create a definition of a need. All right. So when we look at project management, what are some of the things that strike our mind? And when I pick up the examples and the experiences from the film industry, 
Here are some of the things, some interesting perspectives. First of all, if you look at the project management approach related to film industry, what strikes your mind very strongly is that immense diverse talent or different domains which are going to come together and do things within that short period of time. What is very popular and very, very strongly in front of us is of course the hero and the stars and you know, actors and all that. But I think the most respected people are, let's say, the people behind, to begin with, the director. And then there are others, let's say, even into the story, there are the story writers, the script writers, the screenplay writers, and then the director's team has got a whole lot of assistants out there, then there is the editor. You can't forget, of course, music, especially if you're an Indian. The music part of it, the cameraman who makes sure that visually what the director has got in his mind is coming through on the celluloid. And then there's this person who edits the whole thing and puts that all together. And then there are subcategories. Within the making of the film, there is this action specialist, the stunt people and all that. And then there are these people who are providing the sets and the scenarios, the designers. And then, then you have the further hierarchy, not the hierarchy, further domains of the makeup man, the makeup artist, the costumer, and then there is a whole lot of these technical people who are backing it up, including the electricians, the power generators, X, Y, Z. Forget all that. Every day of managing a film shooting, I say it is like doing one kalyana, conducting a marriage. You know why? It's very typical that you have anything between 80 people to about 150 people on the sets. And bang on, the production management team has got to take care of, number one, transportation in time so that the shooting spot is reached in time and as they reach you know I'm smiling films can be very pampering especially for a reasonably successful artist they really indulge with you you get out there comfortably driven over there then you have breakfast then you have chai you have coffee you've got good lunch you rest very well in you know kind of vans and all that but who manages all that the whole infrastructure and administration by a production management team so can you imagine just the amount of domains which are coming together for a single day for work to be completed? And that's the challenge and the interesting thing about this project management. Multiple talents, multiple domain specialists who got to come together and make an impact at a point of time. The second one is very interesting again. And I think a lot of us have this idea that, you know, films, such a creative area. You know, it's so... I mean, it's all about ideas and thoughts. So Manidatna has this wonderful, you know, kind of punchline about it. Yeah, yeah, films are all about uh, creativity and all that. But it's better that all the creativity ends before we begin shooting. Once we begin shooting, it's all efficiency, period. That's it. But it's a very interesting, you know, kind of integration of creative thinking, which has finally got to go through a process, which is efficiency management, the whole project's foundation is creative and aspirational, then cerebral and analytical. That's how it begins. But in the end, the objective reality is, did your film succeed? What happened in the box office collection? The creative intention has got to get converted. Hopefully, it has to be delivered as revenue, rupees and asset price. Kitna mol banai? Kuch banai ki nahi? That has become the question. And then, Actors and stars get rated on that basis. So interesting begins with creative intent, but at the end of it, material reality is what says, hey, whether you've done it or you've not done it. So what makes some of the big differences out here? If you look at it, it's pretty interesting. The multiple creative elements, but there's a great respect for discipline. This is something we have to come to terms with. I would say if, if there's one element which makes a big difference in this project management, it is a sheer discipline. And you know, I don't want to define discipline in you know, kind of, uh, any, any kind of flowery language because I think a lot of people have this idea that films are actually a very indisciplined kind of area. Far from it. For example, for you to become, for somebody to become a good, reasonably good kind of a specialist in any area, it involves hours and hours and hours of either apprenticeship, learning, putting their head down, and doing very, very rudimentary, fundamental things. I think an A.R. Rahman would have spent probably 10,000 hours of practice before he even made, let's say, a big, impactful film like Roja. 
Money used to always say that if you have not watched at least a thousand films, don't even aspire to become a director. What have you learned from that? The real question. In the good old, I mean, not in the good old times, in the good old times, and even today, not so much in India, but in the West, you are not a qualitative actor if you have not spent hundreds of hours of actually practicing, rehearsing, trying it out. Of course, in India, in terms of becoming a film actor, there are other criteria, but it calls for a lot of discipline. So that's one important thing. The second one is, it's a conversion of a subjective idea into an objective reality. I think that's very fascinating. Where does it all begin? Somebody says, you know, sir, I've got, I got an interesting idea. And that's how you know, film begins. And it could be a, 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 a stream of words. It could be just a combination of thoughts. And somebody says, I've got an interesting idea. So from the subjective reality of an idea, the hope that there will be a measurable, objective, commercial appeal that will finally. Sir, that's all okay. Idea is nice, sir. But Gukuma, sir, will it succeed? Comes the big question. And then finally, there are three dimensions which need to be managed when it comes to project management in the films. First one is, like I said, the efficiency of production management, especially. The second one is what I call as creative discipline. Now, this is a little incongruent. How can you be creative and still talk about discipline? And I would say precisely because of that. It's creative discipline. If you understand discipline as 2E plus 2P. What is this 2E plus 2P? Enabling and ensuring doing the right things. Preventing and prohibiting doing the wrong things. If you understand that as a discipline, period. Very, very clear. That's very much required as far as this is concerned. And of course, the third interesting part is what I would call as the ability to influence minds. I'm talking at this stage about not influencing the mind of the audience who finally are the big people out there approving your products and services. I'm talking about the mind influencing related to the film making itself. So if you look at the project management challenges related to that, a few other things will unfold. And when I look at that and also look at the organizational work that I've been doing, what are the kind of leaders who make a difference? Who are the leaders who get the best out of people? We're talking about harnessing people power. I find some interesting patterns. So I'm going to talk about that and maybe I'll also bring some anecdotes related to. And you'll be interested more in the film, you know, kind of anecdotes. So I'll talk about some of them. I call them the hero leader, H-E-R-O. Of course, I play with the abbreviations all the time. So the H-E-R-O actually stands for some qualities that I want to talk about. And I'm sure you must have heard about some of these earlier, but let me underline them, even if you have heard them earlier. The first one is the one who can melt hierarchy. The most powerful leaders are those who don't fall prey to this typical idea that, you know, there are 14 people working under me. <laughs> Let's be very clear about fundamentals. Authority is like water. It flows downwards. No big deal. Anyone who feels damn good that there are 14 people, 20 people, 100 people working under me, you have already missed the point. That leader who can melt hierarchy, and I think that's a very powerful thing. That leader who can only structurally appreciate hierarchy for certain compulsions, but who can melt hierarchy and go beyond, will make a big difference. And that would be fundamental point number one. And how do we understand? We'll take a step further on this. The second one, the E part of it, very simple. It's emotional thing. Engaging and energizing. If you closely look at it, and I'm sure some of your organizations must be doing the famous Q12 survey of employee engagement and all that. If you choose to carefully look at some of those, you will find that all those 12 attributes that they bring out there are very clearly identifiable, measurable, influenceable attributes of engagement. If any one of you are interested, any one of you is interested in knowing deeper about that, I'm willing to share those points about you offline. Engagement is not a romantic word. Engagement is dedicated action day in and day out with people. A good leader is capable of doing that. So the second one on the hero is the E part of it. The third one is, yeah, so is it all machine love and affection and all that? No, far from it. 
it's uh, one thing altogether to say you know we all feel like a family we all feel emotionally very bonded ah that's wonderful so what are you guys doing nothing you know we are closed doesn't make sense all right you need to feel good so as to make an impact and that impact is result driven every bit every bit and i think this is where most organization miss out they have some mental definition of what is more important and less important and therefore every bit is not paid attention to there are this fantastic famous 80 20 principles and all that and they think that we can somehow manage this in some kind of a broad aggregation it doesn't work and finally objectivity i think that's one very important thing indication of maturity can you be objective all the time can you really ask the question in the best interest of organization in the best interest of process in the best interest of result and in the best interest of customer are we doing things that's objective goes beyond any other consideration it overcomes emotional tax you partner for performance than for reasons of either familiarity or anything else including heredity therinjavanga namba nalla payan and all the kind of considerations let's make a wish for hierarchy is incidental hierarchy is incidental that's the truth of life like you know family any every structure will have a hierarchy like a family structure a family structure has its own kind of implications so does it for a, for a moment mean that hierarchically the child the newborn child is less important than let's say the dad or the mom you will be surprised it is not far from it it's because of the emergence of a child you first of all even pick up a label called a parent you owe it to that child you better be thankful about it you and your label is licensed by that new entity there is a great interdependency but organizations have a very seductive way of making you feel that you know others don't matter and if you get carried away you are in for root shocks hierarchy is incidental division of capability should be considered horizontal rather than vertical it's only when you consider that it's horizontal that you can move around otherwise it becomes climbing a mountain you know and the mountain of your ego that's a problem the moment you make it horizontal it's so much easier you can go down you can reach out to people you can do things you can inspire people and team together everyone achieve small really becomes a possibility the second important thing is can you inspire by appreciating the smallest of contribution i think this is the capability of a good leader can you truly appreciate even the smallest of contribution now when i say you know let me give you an example as an actor you know uh, in, in, i i think that i do a lot of things sometimes i think when i'm performing amazingly well my best shot gets edited you know and you feel pretty <laughs> lousy about it it happens boss it happens so often it has happened and then you sit in the theater and you're waiting for that shot to come and it doesn't come at all but i'll tell you an incident where you know this is where i think i had some to some of these guys I was. Uh, I had done just one Malayalam film with Shaji Kaila, the famous uh, uh, director. And I know, like many of my films, I was this famous Don, you know. And I'm coming in a speedboat, you know. And we shot it in uh, uh, this one near Kolam, that uh, backwaters out there. So there is a speedboat in which I'm coming, and of course, as usual, because I'm the Don, I'm standing like this, and there are two people with guns in their hands next to me. And the boat comes and stops at the jetty. and it stopped at the jetty and as i'm about to climb on all right there's a guy who's waiting over there and he helps me now you know i had a very brief role i did about six scenes or something in that film but you know i have to establish that i'm the don you know in every way the way i look the way i behave the way i gesture and all that so the boat comes and it stops now this is a long shot and a long shot where i say the camera is double the distance from that end of this room to this end almost and the director is sitting you know next to that cameraman and he's watching and he's observing what i'm doing so the boat comes and it stops and as it stops you know my two gunmen you know they take position you know as if to help me and as i'm about to you know climb onto the edge of the boat the guy who's there on the jetty puts out his hand i take a second to decide and then i take his hand i came up and then i look at him and then i kind of clean my hand how can this little you know this little tiny mortal insignificant guy how can you know kind of be good enough to touch my hand 
I finished the shot. When I came there, Shaji was laughing and he put his hand out and said, Kitty, that was fantastic. I said, what? He said, the way you kind of cleaned up your hand, that indicated character. That indicated character. That you would be so spiteful about lesser mortals, that indicated <laughs> character. I was touched. This is where I'm saying, you know, can you imagine in all that performance of many scenes, X, Y, Z, so many artists, who is going to bother about looking at some, you know, kind of handshake and cleaning on the hand. I'm giving this as an example of the ability to notice small little intricacies. Well, I'm giving a film example, but tell me, you think anything is shortage in our normal life, in our normal project management? Diamond is an opportunity, provided you are sensitive and observant. The third interesting thing, our good leaders are those who walk around, who also talk around. Today I find that the shift in the organizational priorities are from so-called organization development into organizational communication. Communication has become so dynamic, so easy, so powerful to reach people at all levels at every single minute. Make use of it. Be constantly connected with people and I'm not even saying in terms of an ongoing survey and supervision, no, but to communicate, to inspire, to make them feel good. A good leader knows how to make use of these powerful communication devices and aids that are available and constantly touch them in the right kind of way. And if you can, bring joy every day. Live with reach, empathy and positive influence. There are many creative ways in which a project leader can do that. But if he can recognize that every day makes a difference and everyone makes a difference, he can make some significant efforts in this particular area. And so this is the first one in terms of how are we able to melt the hierarchy block. The second one is about engaging and energizing and I think this is very important. Like I said in the Q12, every one of those questions relate to a way of engaging. Whether it's for caring, whether it's for giving opportunities, whether it's for innovation, whether it is for encouragement, whether it is for grievance handling, whatever. Sensitivity makes a big difference when it comes to care and comfort. Now, one of the interesting things that I find, again, in, you know, when it comes to project management in films, is that those film units where there's a real-time care related to the basic facilities, and it'll be so interesting to watch. For example, you know, typically, especially if you're doing outdoor shooting and things like that, you can be in God-forsaken kind of places. It could be a desert of Rajasthan, it could be a forest, it could be somewhere in, you know, kind of mountain ranges. And, you know, there are these guys, the light men, the assistants and all of them who really slog it out in the most difficult kind of situation. And, you know, one of the most amazing production teams, those production teams where without fail, every one hour, there will be a production boy who will carry a can of things and give a glass of maybe juice to every one of those light men assistants out there and the language will be so nice. Anne, Savdrigla, Anne, Kurti at the Gringla. Every one hour they would reach, give them something, not one guy will get missed. Constantly, constantly. Knowing that, you know, these are conditions which are so difficult, it's not comfort of a home, it's not an air-conditioned kind of a facility ever, constantly battling the vagaries of weather, but the willingness to constantly reach out and make those small little needs fulfilled makes a big difference. And sometimes I found this in Bombay, especially when I'm doing at films. Especially when I'm doing at films. You know, their lunch, breakfast will be completely socialistic. From the topmost artist and director to the so called lowest level employee or whosoever, or let us say the charge hand over there, we will all eat from the same table, from the same common food. Some of these qualities are very, very high in terms of creating engagement. Engage and instill enthusiasm, instant feedback, appreciation and course correction. A lot of times it's not even a question of appreciation, but the fact that you notice. The fact that you notice and you're able to communicate that you notice makes a big difference. And I think those leaders are respected a lot. And finally, Get extended collaboration and contribution by being the role model. I think this is the most important thing. Extended collaboration and cooperation when you become the role model. And I want to talk about one or two of these very interesting incidents. 
director priyadarshan i'm sure again you guys must be knowing now he has directed many you know hindi films also this is a story that i heard from him uh his first you know kind of uh, hindi film i did a small role in that as a, as a cop again uh, but this is related to you know this role modeling typically by film director uh malayalam films at least in those good old days was known for their time discipline very efficient very very cost conscious saving and i think he came from that background okay and hindi films were known for the fact that you know you got your call sheet at 8 o'clock in the morning which means generally around 12 o'clock you will come to the set <laughs> and then you know it's all understood four hours can pass so i believe uh, this is a film where anil kapoor was there jackie shroff was there and you know pooja bhat was there i remember that so i believe day one call sheet at 7 o'clock in the morning and they are not used at 7 o'clock 9 o'clock itself is you know kind of too early a call sheet 7 o'clock kya baat hai 7 o'clock call sheet so i think around uh, around about uh, 10 o'clock i think anil kapoor kind of landed up and i think jackie shroff landed up and they found that priyadarshan was uh, sitting there so the moment the artist landed up priyadarshan got up and said pack up and then he went off he said what is it he said pack up he just went off day two all right so anil kapoor said you know i got to be definitely better you know tune uh so landed up at the set he was late only by about half an hour okay not more than that and i think jackie shaw was there after another 10 minutes or so priyadarshan got up and said pack up went off day three Priyadarshan came as usual at seven in the morning. Anil Kapoor was waiting. <laughs> Message very clear. Message very clear. Role modeling. I don't know whether you read that you know kind of book about Maniratnam, and we were part of the same you know kind of I was part of luckily part of the team. We were doing Dalapati. That's right. In Uti, when we were doing one of those very difficult song sequences and things like that, we had to reach the place. You know, in some of the shots you are wanting. by sunrise and things like that you got to actually leave your hotel by about 4 4:30 in the morning so the invariably i mean i was part of the directorial team also though not in the title we would be in the first production van that leaves for the spot before others you show your role model you inspire people if you want to be a very very passionate leader wanting to harness people power you show you demonstrate by your behavior what is expected as the values and beliefs and culture of working over there the third one is the result drivenness that we are talking about assessment and review are every minute constantly pay attention to details and that's very interesting when it comes to well i got five more minutes and i got 15 more slides thank you so much <laughs> okay so this is what happens to your storyteller who comes in You know, this is the interesting thing. In, in, in industrial engineering, in job evaluation, there's a concept called time span of responsibility, which means, you know, depending upon at what level you are in the organization, there's a time span of responsibility that you manage. You know, what's the most enjoyable thing about being a good, reasonably successful actor? Your time span of responsibility. Any idea what it is? My time span of responsibility is precisely 45 seconds. From the time the director says action to cut. i perform period and that is how films get made every shot is a project every shot let me repeat is a project every scene is a project every day shooting is a project the total operations is a project so the element of considering as a project goes from the minutest bit out there and i think that's why it's amazingly good to learn a lot from film making as a project management issue and for that you got to demand what is required even if it's going to be a problem story again because you know sometimes you don't get what you want to get so we were in this climax of talabadi and of course you know amrish puri was there and amrish puri was a very very already well known big you know kind of an actor out there really. and this was a fight sequence as usual you know and the last scene where you know rajdi khan comes and you know he's bashing you know amrish puri so amrish puri gave short one and of course these are action shots which are you know kind of long winding shots then you know retake and then second retake third retake but the time it was fourth three retake i think amrish puri said this is not as per my standard in hindi nobody asked me to do four you know kind of retakes kind of a thing so he finished the shot and came and said yeah i think that was good okay 
So Mani Ratnam looks at him. He says, if you want, take a rest. One more take. <laughs> That's it. You can rest for some time. That's okay. But I decide what is right for the shot. The ability to demand whatever is required is, I think, important part of a good leader. Results driven. Emphasize goal clarity is more important than role clarity. Sometimes you must be willing to step in, take on other roles, and do whatever that is required. I want to talk about this, but I think it will take some time. For example, I did for a song in Agni Nachatram. Ninnu Kori Varnan, that song. Toda Tarni had some argument and some difference of opinion, so he didn't come for shooting for three days. So I did the art director's role, simply because Mani turned around and said, what do we do? So I smiled and he knew that I was interested in painting and I used to work in the sets of Nayakan as the associate director. He said, Kitty, you think you can do that? I said, of course I can do that. Well, that's it. Pick up and do. Role clarity is less important than goal clarity. Get it done. When there is a conflict, this is the most important learning. If at all I want to tell you guys, I cherish this learning. How do we really bring maturity to perspectives, you know, and situations which are challenging? I would say, if there's a conflict of opinion, go one level higher and then view the whole thing. I have a difference of opinion with you, let's go to the next hierarchical level. And from that point of view, look at things. But if it's an emergency, let's be willing to go even two levels down and dirty our hands to get things done. <laughs> I think this perspective is very important and we practice that. So this part, I'm going to therefore, thanks to my friend who reminded me, I skipped some very good slides, you have to regret anything. <laughs> so what does all this mean? While well, harnessing the human power, don't worry, I'll give them the slides. Be a transformational leader. Be a leader who is a combination of these two qualities. Tremendous human empathy with a terrific drive for results and getting things done. And to be a transformational leader, communicate bountiful life expectations, status, concerns, implications, disappointments proactively. You take the lead and you do that. That's the first quality of a transformational leader. Proactively and proactive communication and influencing. The second quality of a good leader, transformational leader is sensitivity. Care like nobody else can. Bring hope, assurance and joy to every day. Reach with sensitivity and positive influence. I think that's the most important quality required for a leader. You will never get an appointment letter in your life saying that we are very happy to appoint you as a leader. You'll get a lot of appointment letters as manager, senior manager, general manager, vice president. Nobody gives you an appointment. You know why? Leadership is a subjective reality because it's about influencing minds. If you can, then you become a leader. Bring in sensitivity for that. The third important thing is the conviction. You know, the beauty is, as you're working as a leader, however small your project is, believe me, you've got an opportunity to create an amazing work culture. And they pick it up. Today, I was so touched by somebody. As I walked in, he came in and said, Sir, I said, I don't, sorry, the smile looks familiar. 12 years back, in, you know, kind of Kodaikanal, Rayala, I heard your talk. I still remember you know, I have just even on my laptop have the video copy of your talk. You feel so touched. You know why? Because you have planted some values and beliefs in the mind of somebody. A good leader constantly is planting good values and beliefs in the minds of people. And most important one, teach them to be principal center. Managerial capability becomes manipulative capability because you do it as a matter of somehow, anyhow, get it done. I don't care. This raising of the hands and somehow, anyhow, or that any Tom, Dick and Harry Faltu leader can do. I won't even call him a leader. Any Tom, Dick and Harry Faltu manager can do. Somehow, anyhow. Bullshit. There cannot be somehow, anyhow. There must be know-how. There must be do-how. There must be dharmikata. There must be principle-centeredness in everything that you do in your life. Finally, be a leader who runs on the basis of principle-centeredness. And finally, culture of appreciation. Operate from a surplus mentality. For God's sake, you become a senior person, suddenly your facial muscles go through a chain. <laughs> Can't you ever smile to people? Can't you ever take yourself easy and your life easy? Operate with surplus mentality. I always say this. If I have a lot of money and I give off all my money, 
I'll become a pauper. If I have a lot of material and distribute away the material, I'll become a beggar. But believe me, any amount of good thoughts, good words, good feelings, good inspirations that I give, they come back to me a million times more. I become richer. This is the truth of it. Operate from surplus mentality. Four simple principles. Proactivity, sensitivity, principle centeredness and surplus mentality. You don't have to harness the manpower. They become your fans. They become your loyalists. They become your team. That's the possible pathway. For you. Did I do that in five minutes? Open for questions if there are. Yeah, please go ahead, boss. Yeah. My name is Satya. Yeah. Suddenly you make a dialogue to Samal Hassan. Yeah. Satya is so nice or something like that. And then you break into a laughter. Yeah. There was a chill up the spine of the audience. Right. Am I right? It's very I remember it. Yeah. So yeah. what happens is Satya is there. I've asked him something and he is crossing and going. And for him to hear, I say, Palm Satya, you blow the Nalaman. And then he goes out of the door. And my assistant comes and says, so shall I, our brother, Satya, I turn and say, Yaar Satya. Yaar Satya. Sir, that chill up is... Oh, he's the guy. He's Satya, actually, he's Satya. That chill up the spine, I can still remember today. Okay. And when you walked in and started giving this talk, centering around harnessing people for, for project success, it was amazing transformation for this entire audience. Two key takeaways, I would like to sum up. Hierarchies are incidental and they need to be melted. Just a very quick personal example. A month ago, I was just thrust into leading a very large engagement, 300 people. I started meeting each one of the engineers on the floor. I have currently connected about 10 of them, three a day. Because that way, I started to get into the deeper roots of the problem. People are getting stunned, but I have got energy. Sure. Second thing is, a very, very brilliant thing that you are talking about, Shaji Kaila sitting, long shot, double the distance. That small handshake where you touch away, that was brilliant. Smallest gestures, if they are genuinely appreciated by a leader, people power is always there to be harnessed. Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir, for a most refreshing session of the day, I will say. We understand that how filmmakers are able to influence the people. Okay. Now you have influenced the entire audience by giving more takeaways. The three dimensional point, the hero model, how a role model happens. And the role clarity is less important than the goal clarity. And the transformation leadership, definitely. A very, very big thanks for delivering a beautiful lecture on this one, sir. As a token of the gratitude, I, we would like to present a moment to May I call? Prasanna, Secretary of the PMHA chapter.